we are in the first Corinthians, the first chapter, and our theme for this last two lessons, this is part two, is a dedicated life unto the Lord in Christ. A dedicated life unto the Lord in Christ. This is personal because you have asked yourself, first of all, do, or have you dedicated your life unto the Lord? That's, that's the question you must ask yourself because that's what God is looking for. I remember some years ago, myself and Mother uh, Paysinger, we were soul winning partners, and on Sundays we would go and visit hospitals for years. And I can remember this gentleman that we were told that was very, very sick in the hospital at 76 years of age. He was 76 years of age. Just to show you how the devil will deceive you. And just how you'll wake up in the graveyard. Because if you still want to do your foolishness. We went there, we listened at the man, 76 years of age. Didn't have much strength. Laying in the hospital bed. If they put you in the hospital at 76, you got some issues anyway at 76. And when we finished talking with him and praying with him, he told us, well, he doesn't want to give his life to Jesus because when he gets out of the hospital, he has more things he wants to do for himself. Mm. He, he's not through living for himself. He's not through having fun. Oh, Lord. 76 years of age. I can guarantee you one thing. That was about 40 years ago. I can guarantee you right now he's not alive. I guarantee you right now he's not alive. I, I don't know. haven't seen him after that. All I know is pray for him on his sick bed in the hospital, 76 years old. He was deceived thinking that he had other days and other times. He still wanted to finish having fun. Wow. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. A dedicated life unto the Lord and Christ. Now, understand that everything God asks us to do, He will empower us to do it if we would, if we would simply ask Him to. He will give us the strength to go through issues. He will empower us to live righteous, but you have to want it. He will help you to go through your issues, like the prayer was saying. Uh, earlier as Dr. Gail prayed. And so we talked about you having a dedicated life unto the Lord in Christ because the benefits are outstanding. Now remember that Paul went into this Corinthians church last week and they had problems because there was issues. You know, churches have issues, uh, pastors have issues, Members have issues, and we are to we are to regulate our lives by the word of God. You, if you're a flyer off the handler and go off or or thief or what have you, let me tell you something. You're not you're out of compliance with the word of God. Hmm. The word of God lets us know, boy, if you if you can't control your tongue, then you probably don't even have God in your life. If you control, if you don't have that, then you have no brakes on you in your life. God puts brakes on our lives. He put boundaries on our lives right. because our lives need to reflect him. Mm. <clears throat> and we found that in this church last week in the Corinthian church, they were, they were arguing to the point of just angry and what have you over who they believe in, uh, uh, the different uh, 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 the Paul or Paulus or whoever it was, they had, they were battling over who uh, they were baptized by. I'm a Paul, I'm a this man, that man. In other words, lifting the man higher than God himself. Right. Lifting to somebody other than God. Hallelujah. I need you all to uh, mute your lines. I hear friction and come to static, come over the line. Check your lines for being muted. Hallelujah. And um, and so Paul was trying to go there and bring peace among the among the saints in the church. 
because they are the ones to be the example to the world. Uh -huh. And so he comes there to remind them that, uh, that who they are supposed to be living by. They're supposed to have a life. Their lives are supposed to be dedicated unto the Lord, and they're supposed to be in Christ. Yes. Yes, they are. Hallelujah. I'm going to start back at the 10th verse. It says, Now I beseech ye therefore, brother, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you. Excuse me. But that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Mm -hmm. In other words, hold it, folks. Hold it. We're supposed to be the church. Y'all can just cut out all this messy thing. Ooh. You know, yeah, this fighting and shooting doesn't look good, doesn't sit well, is not a good example. You're fighting over, uh, over men. There are divisions. All these, you know, you get into churches and what have you. People start having their little groups, or they become a little, their own little group, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to do this, and I'm not going to do that, and yeah, I'm not going to do this, and I don't blame you. Let me tell you something. This is God's church that we're dealing with here. It might be on the phone, but guess what? It's on God's phone. Right. He made the provision for this society to be able to talk on the phone and computers and, and all the stuff we do. So he's trying to tell them, no matter what you are, what the world does, as the church, you're supposed to be joined together, having the same mind. That don't mean you have to speak the exact same words, but your words need to be speaking in the same direction that the power of Jesus can help you. It can it can break your yoke. It can lift you up if you're down. If you're old dope, it, will, it can set you free if you just go into it. If you're an alcoholic, God has the power and the strength to be your AAA or whatever you need to break that stronghold. That's so if you're true. a liar, a fusser, a grumbler, hallelujah, a thief, a robber, whatever it is, he's saying, let me tell you something, as the church, we should have the same mind, not bickering. We should be letting the world know what Christ can do because guess what? They may not read the Bible. But they read your life. You, you know, you, 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 if you flying off the handle of everything, you might, you just killed your testimony. Mm. Uh huh. If you're talking about doing uh, some evil things, or uh, somebody, oh, we ought to go over there and do this and do that, you just killed your testimony. Mm. Uh huh. If you're in there talking about, well, you're going to sneak a, oh, you found somebody who wallet on the floor in the store and, and hey, you know what? Losers, weepers, finders, keepers. Well, guess what? The person with you, they don't have to read the Bible. They read your life that right. you have not been changed. Right. In that 11th verse, it said, For it has been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are in the house of Chloe, and that's another thing, that there are contentions among you. They got strife. You don't like each other. Grumbling and fussing. Can't get along. You know, people think everything ain't got to go their way. Hallelujah. And the older we get, my old pastor used to say, you get grumpy and mean. And he used to preach. And <laughs> Henry Frederick should always bring me up. He, he said, uh, Bishop Smith used to preach. <laughs> grow old, but don't grow old grumpily. Stop grumbling. Stop fussing. And that's why I learned as a child. I said, well, when I get old, I'm not going to be a grumbling, fussing, because nobody want to be around you when you're grumbling and fussing already. You already get old, and now you're making yourself looking old and mean and nasty. Got to have your way and everything. Oh, Bishop, he's an old man himself. He was, when I first joined the church, he was 72 years of age. But the nicest man, gentlest man, wise man, way back there in the 60s, he had written seven books. But he wasn't arrogant. Mm. The children loved him. The, 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 the teenagers loved him. Why? Because he practiced what he preached. Mm. So Paul comes in here and they got this church, they're all bitter, they all got contentions, 
the, the, the strife among them. He says, now says, I say that every one of you says, oh, I'm a Paul. I'm a Paul man. And I'm a Paul. Oh, a pilot. I'm a Paul. And I believe in a pilot. And a is this and a pilot is that. And another say, well, I'm Cephas, and Cephas, I'm going to tell you, Cephas, Cephas, Cephas does business. <laughs> Cephas is better than this or better than that. And I'm a Christ. <laughs> and Paul should ask a question to them in that 13th verse. Basically, I see all y'all are split in pieces. You all, you're unstable, you don't, you, you got, you're here, you're there. He has to is Christ divided? Is, is, is Christ divided? He's after them. He want to know who are you all serving? He says, was Paul crucified for you? <laughs> Talk about himself. You call you a Paul man, but did, was I crucified for you? Is it me that saved you? Amen. Or you were you baptized in the name of, or were you baptized in the name of Paul? He's using himself. To make them see how foolish that is and stop this bickering and stop this fighting. That's right. He said, I thank God that I baptized none of you. He said, Happy that I'm so glad I didn't baptize you all. Woo, when I came in the last time. He said, But Christmas and Genius, he said, Let any of you should say that I had baptized in mine own name. Because you've been around, if I, you would have been bragging, Well, oh, I was baptized in the name of Paul. He's trying to say, y'all missed the mark. <laughs> I'm so glad I did. I'm glad I didn't baptize when I came through here. Because that's what you all would be saying. Oh, I'm baptized by Paul. Mm -hmm. All these divisions, this little simple-minded stuff. Yep. They have gotten off the off the, the sweet word of God. Off the humble word of God. Off the heartfelt word word of God and gotten into their own arguments and things about how they feel about it, how they believe about it. They forgot the basic message of unity. He says, and I baptized also the house of Stephen besides. I know not whether I baptized any other. Paul said, let me tell you something. I know, I can't remember baptizing anybody else but those four. For Christ sent me not to baptize. Folks, I didn't come here to be a baptizer. That's what he's trying to say. But to preach the gospel, not the wisdom of words, let the cross should be made a non-effect. Look, you all are arguing about who baptized this and who's the best baptizer and who's the best speaker and who's the best preacher and he says, you all, but you all have forgotten the gospel. That's what you've forgotten. you got all here around all this peripheral mess. You hung up on, the, on who's the wisest and who can speak better. He said, but you have forgotten that I have come to preach the gospel, and you should be talking good news that Jesus Christ has come, that he has broke us under from the curse of the law, and he has set us free. Good news that you can go to God now. You don't have to go to a priest to get to God. Good news that whatever is ailing you, you can go to God for healing. Good news. And you are arguing about who's the wisest and who's the most eloquent and who's the this or that. What about your life? What are you putting in front of the gospel? Mm -hmm. God wants you. God wants He loves you so He's bringing the gospel to you so you can start talking good news. Look, you need to get them bad news kids out your life. Because <laughs> your kids ain't bringing you nothing but junk. A lot of you. They're not, are they feeding you? Let me tell you something. If you want to get rid of bad kids or negative kids, start talking Jesus. There it is. You'll win some of them. Hallelujah. I don't want any of my sons to, uh, to, to, uh, uh, to, to go to hell. I don't want them to go to hell. Hallelujah. So you need to talk to him about Jesus Christ. You need to start talking to him about more than the football game. Talk to him more about what you saw Beyonce doing at some, uh, 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 some crazy concert. You need to be talking about, son, have you, have you considered going to Jesus? Daughter, have you considered going back to church? And you used to teach Sunday school. 
that you can say that, that. Hallelujah. Don't let them always rule the conversation. You bring it to them. Hallelujah. That's right. So it's definitely birth for Christ sent me not to baptize. I'm not here. I'm not a baptizer. I don't want to be known for baptism, John Paul is saying, but I want to be known for preaching the gospel. For he's called, he anointed me to preach the, the gospel to the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the blind and the sick and free the captive, huh? To, to bring the gospel to the brokenhearted and to the lonely, to those that are discouraged and about to blow their dog, dog brains out. And you over here arguing over some stupid stuff. Right. So God wants to make you into and mold you into a useful tool for him while you have a chance. While there is, while you're yet breathing. The old folks say to say, while the blood is yet running warm in your veins. God wants to use you so you'll have some credit to heaven. Because you don't get any reward in heaven if you don't do any reward here on earth. Hallelujah. You need to check your salvation. Are you ready to go? Are you ready to die? If you die tonight, where would you spend eternity? Wow. God is saying, let me tell you something. I love you. I will give you the strength to live it if you would just step up to the plate and you be real. Because I want you to have heaven's best. I want you to have heaven's best and live doing God's best here on earth. Not just another conversation. Oh, Not just, I'm going to church, but I'm going to hear what I can do for my God. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. I've been to more funerals in the last few years than Van Camp got pork and beans. I'm telling you, I have I have just I've had to fish it. I've done more uh, uh, eulogies in the last number of years. I think in 2011, I went to 29 funerals. Hallelujah. And let me tell you something. Just in the last probably six months, I've been to eulogy for at least probably five or six people. You know, and most of them are young, in the 40s and 50s. Beautiful people, human beings. They thought they would be here today. They had they died with something on their calendars. Mm. Look at that. God is saying, I want to have, I want to be a, you to be a blessing to me on earth. And I'll, I'll stand with you. God will give you the power. Lord, make me, make me, Lord, more of what you want me to be. Because I want to do what you want me to do, Lord. Hallelujah. In the 18th verse, he says, for the preaching of the cross. The preaching of the cross that Jesus died on the cross is to them that perish foolishness. To sinners and philosophers, that's foolishness. Dying on the cross. That's foolishness to them because they think this they know so much. The professors and the and the, the this and the that and what have you. Uh and, and the colleges and you still believe in that. Some uh, a friend of mine told me, uh, said, Oh, how is it that you still believe in that you still believe in that gospel that my mama believed in forty five years ago? I said, Honey, yes I do. I still believe it. And you should too. Hallelujah. Well, she called me a fool because she thinks that she she thought that she had graduated above all of that. That nonsense about Jesus Christ and all of that. Hallelujah. I told her, when you come to your senses, you'll be back where I'm at. And guess what? She's on the Internet now. She was on there talking a bunch of crazy foolishness for years. But that, that God is not real and all of this stuff. Hallelujah. Wow. But you turn on now, guess what? Every day you got, she's on there talking about, come to Jesus. Hallelujah. Because that, she, 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 was, a, she was a fool. Hallelujah. But I told her, God, when you come back to your senses, your spiritual senses, it'll be God. And to her, it's God again. Paul said, for the preaching of the cross of Jesus Christ to them that are lost, basically. To sinners, it's foolishness to them. But unto us which are saved, the cross is the power of God in our lives. Mm. Is it the power of God in your life? Is it the motivating, one of the greatest motivating factors in your life as to how you live your life? Uh-huh. For it is written, 
I'll destroy the wisdom of the wise, the wise, the philosophers, the theologians, and whatever you that. Oh, Jesus is this, and God this, and this is, you, this is not the, uh, the salvation, all that Bible stuff is foolishness. He said, I'll bring them to nothing. The understanding of the truth, all this, you know, kids go to college and they come back. Well, I don't believe no God. Can God make a rock too big for him? And all this kind of stupid stuff. The Bible, he says, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Has not God made foolishness of the wisdom of the world? So God decided to put a plan in to save mankind and look stupid to, to a humanity. It doesn't make sense to them what God, the story of Jesus Christ coming down here and dying for us. Because they they, they, they have their own way of getting to salvation. Either, uh, you know, you leave here and you, you come back as a, if you left here a good person, you might come back here as a, as a, as a dove. But if you left here a bad person, you come back here as a snake or something like that. All that's foolishness. He <laughs> said, that's foolishness. And that 21st, it says, so after the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. They thought that they can get to know God just about counting the stars, all the different um, astrologers and Plato and all these folk who, who begin to describe what the world is all about because of their knowledge. The knowledge of man is, is deceiving. Hallelujah. He says, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. In other words, it's to the world is foolishness. No, I don't want to hear that mess. How many times people tell you, especially these days, don't come up with that mess, that preaching mess. They'll tell you that. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> but that is the message that God used to save them. That is the message that they're going to have to get into eternity or to eternity with in their lives. Right now, because of all the stuff they have on the internet and the television, it's it's a bothersome. All the preachers in the business are preaching. God doesn't care if you saw every preacher in the, in the world messing up. It's a, you're about you, uh, madam. His love is about you, sir. He you, he'll pick you out. He picked you out of the crowd. He expects you to believe his word because it, only his word is going to save you. Nothing I learned at Cal State Dominguez. Uh, Cal State uh, Long Beach, in the, in the times I was working with my bachelor's and master's there, there's nothing I learned in any of those classes. Look, I had, uh, I think it takes, what, 120 units to graduate? I had 120-something units in psychology alone. Abnormal psychology, physiological psychology, child psychology, behavioral psychology. I had every psychology class that you could put out there. But guess what? None of those psychology classes would lead me to salvation. That's right. None of it. None of them. Whether well, I took economics or or or, 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 or or philosophy, none of it would lead me to salvation. But to those folks, the Bible is foolishness. But God is saying it's the Bible that salvation is locked in those words there. Hallelujah. And I can tell you one thing. I haven't read my books I had from Cal State Dominguez since I left there so long ago. But guess what? I read every single day. The gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel of Jesus Christ. It says, for the Jews required a sign. The Jews didn't accept the Bible because they wanted a sign to show that it was a real. They didn't accept Jesus, the death of the cross. And the Greeks seek after wisdom. The Greeks said, well, if, it's, if, if the cross is, let's philosophize on it. He says, but we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews. It's a stumbling block because they can't get over the law. They can't get over not uh, living by grace. And unto the Greeks, it's foolishness because you need to have a, a, a great orator and, and, and understand the, uh, uh, the, the scientific areas. So all of that man's learning, he says, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God, hallelujah. 
So the God, the Word of God is here to save Gentiles and Jews. Uh, learn it and unlearn it. Because the foolishness of God, what they call foolishness, is wiser than anything man can come up with. That's what the scripture is saying here. And the weaknesses of God, what they call weaknesses, is stronger than men. So what they're calling foolishness, God is calling his strength. And what they're calling God's uh, 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 word is uh, stronger than anything they can come up with. For ye, for ye your calling, brethren, how that many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty or noble are called. In other words, have you looked around, fellas? There's not a lot of you all rich folk and powerful folk and educated folk in this crowd, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound them. They're so smart until they're stupid, there he's saying. They're so caught up in what they've learned and what school they've gone to until they're stupid because they can't understand the simple gospel. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound these things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and things which are despised has God chosen. He looked down in the crowds of the people that that people don't want to be around and, and, and they're not educated enough. God is saying, I chose the I chose the people that are willing to say yes. He said, God chosen, yea, all things are which are not, to bring to naught things that are. That no flesh that glory in its presence. He didn't want people coming up here and talking about, well, you know, uh, I, I'm professor there, so I'm that or what have you. And, 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 and guess what? I got God because of, of my degree. It's not, he's not saying he don't want you to have a degree. But he said, I didn't go to the super-duper educated who thought that they were worthy because they have something to offer God. God wants you to know he's not looking at your abilities. He's not looking at your your, uh, your your inability. No, he's looking at your disability. God's looking at your availability. Are you available to be taught? Are you available to be to learn something? Are you available to humble yourself to listen to what the God of the universe has to say about your life? Or are you still the man 76 years old? Or the woman 76 years old in the hospital talking about you still have more things you want to do before you give your life to God. And I guarantee you, he's dead today. He's dead today. By grace, you have an opportunity, hallelujah, to gain the strength, the love of God, to finally at last start doing something for God, to start spreading his word and stop spreading your theories and your mess and what have you. But say, Lord, help me to be what you want me to be at this stage in my life. Use me. God doesn't care if you don't have legs. I had a friend of mine who, who had her legs amputated, and she died about a year or so ago. And, and I called her and, and talked to her about uh, about uh, doing something for the Lord. And she was saying, well, you know, I don't have my legs or what have you. I said, you can show me in the Bible where God don't use people that have, that have don't, don't use people with no legs. I said, I'll eat the page. God use anybody. You don't need legs. Hallelujah. You don't need legs to serve him. Hallelujah. You don't need eyes. You don't need ears. Just you know, let me tell you something. God will use whatever we bring to his table. I want to be used by you, Lord. Some of you haven't given God much in your life, but God will use whatever you got left. Hallelujah. And reward you like you were there for the last 50 years. He said that no such in that 29th verse, that no flesh should glory in his presence, but of him are ye in Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ. That's the key. In Jesus Christ. Jesus will do it for you. Jesus will fix it for you. Jesus will make it right. Jesus will give you the strength to do it. Just say yes. I know you can't do it. I know you don't want to do it by yourself. I don't care what you've been doing all your life. This is your opportunity. This is your opportunity to make up all those failed years. Hallelujah. I don't care if you've been in prison. I don't care if you lived half your life in, in, in Soledad or Silver Brand or some other prison out of the state or in a foreign country. If this is time to give your life and dedicate life, I want to make a new me, make a new me out of you in your word. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. And watch it in that 30th verse. But of him are ye in Jesus Christ. You're in Jesus Christ, who God has made unto us wisdom. He's wisdom to us and righteousness. Just when you're in Christ, in Christ, you are made wisdom and, 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 and righteousness. Righteousness means you are in right standings with God's standards and sanctification and redemption. Look, you've been set aside for God's service. And through that, you are redeemed. He's your kinsman redeemer. He has bought your price. He paid the price for your sin. Hallelujah. That according as it is written, he, glorif he that glorifies, let him glory in the Lord. Aren't you ready to live a life that you glory in the Lord? That you're praising him during the week. You can stop your fussing, your fighting, your cussing, your carnal thinking, and carnal deeds. Let me tell you something. Hallelujah. You can tr trust one thing. Some of us won't make it through the next year. Hallelujah. It might be me and it might be you. Hallelujah. But I'm ready. Hallelujah. I do not count days. Hallelujah. I wouldn't have occurred if I died 10 years ago. That is not my confusion. I'm not scared of death. Not scared of death. Hallelujah. I don't count days. I make days count. Oh, Some days of you count. need to start making your days count for wow. Jesus. Wow. Hallelujah. I want my every day to count for Jesus, to have done something for Jesus, to have told somebody about Jesus, to have made a move toward opening up a way for people to get to know Jesus to change my life and betterment in the name of Jesus. And that's what God is wanting from you so you can have some rewards when you get to heaven or you can escape because some of you are on your way to the pit. Hallelujah. Some of you are going to be lost eternally because you're still waiting. You haven't gotten out of yourself as of yet. Hallelujah. You're fooling yourself, but you're not fooling your God. Hallelujah. Lord, we want to thank you this morning for your word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A dedicated life unto the Lord in Christ, in you, Lord, not in ourselves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I do want you to lift your hands right where you are at. Hallelujah. Let's go before the throne of grace. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Just repeat after me. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sin. Forgive me for my sin. For the sin I've done. For the sin I've done. And the sin I've been. And the sin I've been. Look at that. Lord, wash me with your blood. Lord, wash me with your blood. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Save me. To save me. Revive me. Revive me. Strengthen me. Strengthen me. Give me the strength to do your will. Give me the strength to do your will. Forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for my sins. And my iniquities. And my iniquities. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, Amen. if you have prayed that prayer and you meant it, if you want to be strengthened, saved, I want you to know God is faithful to his word. Hallelujah. And you need to make some steps toward being that person that you just ask God to be. You can't ask God uh, to, to, to strengthen you and to encourage you and what have you and go back and start hitting your marijuana. Amen. Go back and start getting your alcohol out, huh? Don't be deceived by God. Don't be the old Amen. man in the hospital that's in somebody's graveyard right now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. But look, look, God will change your life. He will change your name and change your game. He's ready to put some joy in there. He's ready to put a real change in you. Hallelujah, because you have just come before him with the sincerity in your heart. God bless you. Amen.
Amen. Amen.